If you're a new Moho user and you've been watching our tutorial videos, you may have wondered why my Moho looks a little different from yours. Keep watching and I'll show you how to optimize Moho for the way I like to work. Hey, welcome back to Little Green Dog's animation tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to share my personal Moho Pro settings and demonstrate why I prefer these settings to the defaults. This isn't to say that these are the best Moho settings for everyone, but maybe this tutorial will give you ideas for customizing Moho to work better for you. Also, you may find it easier to follow along with my tutorials after making some of these changes. If you're not sure you want to make any of these changes yet, I suggest that you watch this tutorial through to the end, and then watch it again to follow along and make the changes you like. The version of Moho we'll be using is 14.2. Before we begin, I'm going to reset Moho's default settings. Please note that resetting Moho is optional, and I'm mainly doing this for the purpose of this tutorial. But if you ever need to reset Moho, this is how you do it. If you don't want to reset your Moho settings, feel free to skip to the next chapter. To reset Moho, we need to go to the Moho Pro Settings folder. The following instructions are for Windows 11 users. But Mac users can do the same by going to their Preferences folder and finding the Moho Pro folder there. To find this folder in Windows 11, you need to open your User folder. If you have a shortcut to your User folder on the desktop like I do, you can open it from there. Otherwise, click on the Search button and enter percent sign user profile percent sign, all as one word with no spaces. Open the result and Windows will take you to your user folder. Click on the three dots and click Options. Click on the View tab, enable Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives, and click Apply. This makes the hidden folder called App Data appear. Open it. Open Roaming. Open Lost Marble. Open Moho Pro. You should see a folder here called 14. This is your Moho Pro 14 settings folder. When you open it, you'll find the files for Moho's current default settings. OK, let's go up one level. Create a new folder here and call it 14 Backup. Drag the 14 folder into the 14 backup folder. The reason I made a backup for my settings is so I can recover them in case I goof something up. As they say, better safe than sorry. Now, the next time we launch Moho, Moho will generate a new 14 folder in this location with Moho's original default settings. Let's launch Moho. Because Moho now thinks it's freshly installed, it's going to ask me to choose a location for my custom content folder. If you previously chose a custom content folder, choose it again now. If you have never chosen a custom content folder, I highly recommend doing so. To use custom tools, brushes, and other user-created content, the custom content folder is where you will install them. You can choose a folder almost anywhere on your computer. For many users, the User Documents folder is a good place. This way, the files are always available to Moho. On my computer, I have a folder called Content Folder on my D drive, and it's where I store content for many art and animation programs. In this folder, I have a folder called Moho, and it's where I keep the custom content folders for every version of Moho I use on this computer. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to create a Moho 14 folder here and choose it as my custom content folder. Moho's custom content folder is useful in many ways and I'll explain how in upcoming tutorials. All right, we're back in Moho Pro. Let's change some settings to make it easier to use. We'll begin with the windows. This is the library window. Because I don't need it right now, and it takes up a lot of screen space, I'm going to close it. When I need the library, 
I can reopen it by clicking this button in the corner. The Tools window is docked way over on the left side of the screen. But to me, the Tools window is more useful if I can move it closer to the area where I'm working. So I'll go to Windows, Docking, and select Tools to undock it. Now I can move the Tools window anywhere I want. Over on the right side, we have the Style window and the Layers window docked together. In my experience, the Layers window needs all the vertical space it can get. For example, this is the Layers window for a recent animation I made. That's a lot of layers. But when the Style window is docked like this, it can take away half the space away from the Layers window. So I'm going to undock the Style window. Now I freed up the Layers window to use the full height of the screen. Yay! When I'm working on a small display and I need a little more space to work in, I'll shrink the Styles window by setting the swatches to None. A swatch in Moho is just an image you can sample from, and it's not an editable color palette like in a paint program. This means the swatch area might not be as useful as you think. When I need an editable color palette, what I do instead is I'll add a Moho vector drawing of a palette and sample my colors from there. This is more useful than using a swatch, because these vector tiles can hold other style properties besides color. Properties like stroke, fill, line thickness, textures, and effects. We'll learn more about this later in a tutorial on using styles and custom styles in Moho. Of course, swatches are useful in their own way, and if you use them as intended, you should keep it open. But it's helpful to know that you can close it when you have limited screen space. The one style window default I dislike is the checker selection option. Checker selection highlights the selected shape with this heavy checkerboard pattern. To me, this pattern makes it difficult to see the fill and stroke colors I'm using. When checker selection is disabled, the pattern is replaced by this red bounding box, which doesn't interfere with the appearance of the style. And it looks better too. Now let's look at the layers window. The layers window displays columns of information about your layers. In practice, I use only four columns, and I hide the rest to make the window easier to read. I don't need the kind column, Kind tells me what kind of layer I'm looking at, but that's pretty obvious by looking at the layer's icon. To remove the Kind column, right-click over the header, uncheck Kind, and it's gone. This little triangle opens the Quick Settings window. That's fine, but I can do the same thing by right-clicking on a layer and selecting Quick Settings. So I'm hiding this one too. I like to organize at least some of my layers by color, and I can do this by selecting Quick Settings and choosing my layer color from this list. But I think a better way is to use the Label column. In Moho 14, this column is hidden by default, and to show it, right-click in the header and check Label. To add color to a layer now, I just click on this icon and choose my color from the list. The Label column is on the right side of the Name column, though and that might clip names with long text. So I'm going to move Label to the left side of Name. To move a column, click and hold the cursor over the icon and drag it to the preferred location. Now let's improve the Timeline window. In the Timeline options, change the default interpolation mode to Copy Previous Key. When this mode is selected, any new keyframe will use the interpolation mode of the keyframe that precedes it. This is the same keyframing behavior found in After Effects, and it works great for Moho, too. Let's open Moho's Preferences window and optimize settings there. In the General section under Startup File, I use the setting called Last Save Document. This starts Moho with the project file I was last working in. But if you're new to Moho, you might want to keep it on default startup file, which opens a random sample project you can play with and learn from. If you didn't set the custom content folder earlier, you can set it here by clicking this button. In the Documents tab, check on Save and Restore Viewport Settings in Document. 
Some project settings need this enabled for Moho to remember their state between sessions. Bone width display is set to narrow by default, which I find too skinny and hard to work with, so I like to set it to at least medium. Under Tools, check on Status Bar at Top of Window. This moves the Tool Options information from the bottom of the screen to the top, next to the Tool Options. To me, it makes more sense to see this information up here. Over in Editor Colors, I like to set the background color to a light gray, say RGB 190 or so, which is easier on the eyes and it improves the visibility of certain tool icons. For the View Output Only color, I like to set the transparency level to around 40%. When I have the View Output Only option enabled, this setting makes it easier to see how the image is going to be framed in the final render, without completely masking the items outside of the frame. Object Color affects the color of points and curves. I find the default aqua color hard to see against many of the artwork colors I use, so I prefer to set it to a darker color. I think the other settings are fine, so let's close the Preferences window. If you like using colored bones like I do, then you probably notice that Moho creates extra channels in the timeline for every bone color. To me, this is mostly unnecessary information. Also, I suspect that all this extra data can drag Moho's performance. So, let's get rid of it. First, make sure a bone layer is selected. Open View Timeline Channels, scroll down to Colored Bones, set all of these to minus, and click Apply. The extra color bone channels are now gone, but the keyframes are still visible here in the upper six channels which is all I really use when I'm animating bones in Moho. OK, let's quit Moho and relaunch it. Quitting ensures that Moho saves the changes we made to the default settings. Wow, that was a mouthful. And that's how I optimize Moho's default settings. Not all of these settings will work well for everyone or every project. In fact, it's not unusual for me to adjust background or object color settings from project to project. So don't be afraid to play around with the settings to discover what works best for you. If you mess something up, remember, you can always reset the defaults or replace them with a backup. And if you find settings that work especially well for you, let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for ways to make Moho faster and easier to use. Before we go, I have news about upcoming tutorials. In the next few weeks, we're going to upload tutorials covering essential topics like smart bones, different rigging and binding methods, and of course, part two of our vector drawing tutorial. These essential topics will lay the foundation for more advanced tutorials that will be arriving later. To learn more about the upcoming tutorials, be sure to read Mamichan's coming soon post in the Little Green Dog Channel's community tab. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with another tutorial soon. Until then, don't just sit there, animate!